Now uh, we've done. Let me see here. Well, okay, I'm host. I, 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 I can't well, put we, myself. I can't put myself into a breakout room. Well, let me just give you a call. Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call. Like this one's a newer version than yours. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. Okay, let's let's get let's get going here. Uh, everybody, welcome Willie. Uh, uh, he has a, a, a past long time, uh, well, I guess for about a, a year uh, member who's uh, uh, thumping at us uh, here again a little bit. And uh, uh, Scott, you've been up on a couple of meetings since you uh, made your great uh, return from the from the dead, like Lazarus returning, uh. um, or is that the phoenix from the fire or whatever it was. I, I think maybe it was both, if I remember correctly. Uh, Scott, you've had some uh, pretty good um, um, off to the races moments already this month. G give everybody an update. Okay, sure. Yeah. I, <clears throat> so when I came back from the, you know, the uh, Colorado meeting, I was fired up. And I, as I was saying last week, uh, we just, uh, you know, I'm in a really good location. So I have, I have the blessing of not having to mark all the time and I still get a decent amount of traffic flow. But I decided to market, you know, so we we did a lot of marketing. We did a movie event, running Facebook ads. We did a buddy event. Mm -hmm. um, and so we got a lot of big boost of traffic for June. My goal, I came home from your event uh, and just set a goal for 100 students in June, July, in 90 days, June, July, and August. And, uh, and then I changed, I, I raised my prices. To, I was at 297, so I bumped it up to 347. And then I, I was, as I was saying last week, Master Oliver, you weren't here, but uh, I went over some old notes that I took of you and Grandmaster Smith and uh, Master Moody about just sales and stuff like that. And I studied that. So I did all those things. And then um, I signed up, I've signed up uh, 34 students in 20 days. Okay. You're on track. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. You're right on track to add a hundred. That's for sure. Yeah. Where, where did, where did most of the traffic come from? Uh, buddy event was big. We haven't had one of those ever. So uh, my wife made some buddy passes. We handed them out. And a lot of our students are, are on vacation, you know, but still, they're still trickling into um, buddy events. Um, Facebook is doing well for us. Uh, the movie event, we're still rolling those in, but that, that was probably the least of the three. And then we still get a decent amount of organic traffic. So um yeah, I think it's like that. I don't, I don't have actual numbers yet for the month, but that's where we're at as a running total anyway. I, I yeah. think that's an important thing to mention that you did a bunch of stuff. The movie event, for a lot of people, that's their home run. But in your case, it wasn't a home run. But because you had enough stuff going, mm -hmm. that's the, that's what the Parthenon effect is. So everybody hear that. We Movie events are often big, big home runs, and they probably will next time. But if you have enough stuff, it works. If you only depend on one thing, then that's when you get in trouble. Yeah, right. but you know th this uh, this month on on uh, the movies. Now that you mention it, it is kind of interesting. Um, you know, Disney, in my opinion, since they got rid of um, um, God, what's his name, uh, uh, John Lasseter, uh, they have not been hitting home runs with uh, uh, with Pixar movies, and um, um, so the um uh the Pixar movie that came out this weekend had a disappointing opening that's uh Elementals um and then uh, the Flash uh had a projected opening of about 80 million and in fact did about 55 million so that had a little bit of a of a disappointing opening but Spider-Man is kicking ass and then uh, uh there's something else that's still out at the theaters is it Guardi Gar well Guardians of the Galaxy Guardians, Little Mermaid, um, and, and Little Mermaid is another example. Dis Disney's not having a great result with converting animated to live action in most cases. Um, Flash, so, Flash is still out. Yeah, you mentioned well, what I just said is this weekend, Flash debuted and yeah. Elementals debuted. Flash was projected to do eighty million, in fact, did about fifty-five million. Elementals, um, you know, has been so far disappointing numbers. I, I forget what it debuted at but 25 30 million something like that um but what was interesting at the theaters right now is the combination of little mermaid still running uh spider-man which is beating expectations is still running so you have the flash you have uh elementals you have um uh, uh spider-man 
Guardians is still out there and you have uh, Little Mermaid. So you do have quite a range of movies, all of them that are in the in the wheelhouse of being useful for us. And then if I'm not mistaken, next weekend uh, is when uh, the next Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, or maybe it's the weekend after that, but the next Raiders movie is coming out as well. Uh, yeah, so so there wasn't a movie that was, uh, you know, the big Marvel 120 million, well, it wasn't the Mario Brothers version of that. All On the other hand, the traffic in the theaters given all of the different things going on was uh uh was uh, likely in most cases still pretty good so Can i ask a question to people that have done the movie theaters because i i did the movie theater this weekend mm -hmm. um friday night was painfully slow but saturday was pretty productive and i didn't do sunday because it was father's day and my family was pissed at me for having thought of signed up for that so um <laughs> is there any benefit of doing like more weekends and keep in mind that so manala's rock star but she's going out of town for two months so i'm doing most of these so i don't mind doing a saturday but for my own sanity doing a three-day weekend blitz every time is going to be a just well, one, one, day is, one, day, one day is better than no days, but two days is better than one day, and three days is better than two days. So you do what you can. Yeah. Okay, uh, so that, that's what uh, I was let, thinking. Let, let, I hit... let, let me answer that in a different way. Yeah, sure. Is your, your biggest job is develop your leadership team, develop your support staff, develop people who are there to help you so that it's not you personally out there. That's where... That's where your biggest need and 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 growth point is for the school, right? Is um, if it were me and it's Guardians of the Galaxy or Spider Man, I'd be there Thursday night, I'd be there Friday night, I'd be there Saturday, I'd be there Sunday. But when I say I, I don't mean I'd be there for any of it, uh, if if um, at all possible. I mean there'd be a booth set up and it'd be properly staffed and be properly orchestrated. You know, for my high karate at at. Uh, I mean, this goes back to the 80s. We were oftentimes had 13 booths going on the same weekend, right? Uh, 13 different locations. Uh, but you gotta you gotta staff it up. You've gotta you've gotta develop the support team, whether it's volunteers or part-timers or other full-timers, so it doesn't have to be you. And with with different movies, you're gonna see uh things go differently, but you'll see something like um a Spider-Man, a Guardians. Um, you know, the big uh, blockbuster Avengers movies, Thursday night was huge, right? Um, so, um, you know, again, depending upon the theater and so forth. And my guess is, I mean, I, I wasn't out in the, well, I, I did go to actually the elementals um, on uh, Father's Day. But, uh, and it, 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 by the way, was, was, was fairly busy. But, um, um, you know, depending upon the theater, uh, and the movie, it's going to depend upon whether Thursday night, Friday night, or Sunday are, are the busier times. Um, but my answer is you need, you've got to develop that leadership staff. You've got to develop that crew to the extent that you don't have it right now. You do what you can do, but that's got to be your highest priority. And, and I think you can train with the scripts that we have. I mean, I have like 14 year olds that kick butt at it, do 95%, 98% appointment rates. Yeah. I, mean, um, I always ask them what their numbers are. And they give me their leads and appointments, and it should be like 98% of the leads or appointments. Uh, and, and sometimes it's 100%. And, and I, I usually question them on that. Like, are you giving me the right numbers? You, are you mean you got everybody to set an appointment? And the answer is yes, in a lot of cases. So you don't have to have, you know, your own replicas for these types of processes. Um, so, you know, it, it's not hard to get people to be able to do that. Uh, do that part of it yeah yeah absolutely hey uh willie i'm i'm going to ask your question uh from earlier for you uh we have on the meeting right now jason who who uh faded out and then came back with uh, uh going strong uh jason you your your gross got down to what and is now what so yeah the gross got down to sixteen thousand um for the month in um, yeah, whenever that was, <clears throat> um, when was that? That was January, 2021. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, now, uh, we're, we're basically in the nineties now. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then Amanda had faded out and then, uh, uh, made a roaring comeback. There's uh, Amanda. What, uh, uh, what, what, what's your recent numbers look like? Uh, where did it bottom, where did it bottom out? Where are you, where are you at, uh, this month? Uh, we, we, uh, last summer we were hitting, like, we bottomed out at around 62 a month. And then, um, we're, we're back up pushing the high seventies, some eighties. So looking forward to a good summer and yeah. looking forward to breaking a million this year. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, 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 Krista, you and, uh, Melissa had been gone a long time and then, and then, uh, came back into the loop. Uh, tell us about your, uh, your great comeback. Where, where were you at when you came back and where, where are you guys at uh, now? We had gotten down to six, 16,000 during the, the pandemic. Um, and then came back to you. We were with you a long time ago. Yeah. You're right. Long time ago. Long I, 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 I was, I was telling people when Jada was three years old and I was just out in your uh, neck it was for a graduation yeah. from college. Yeah. yeah, we were still on teleconferences back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. And now um, last year we averaged 70 a month. Excellent, excellent. And, and you had had a few months that were in the mid 80s, haven't you? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah we had yeah. a couple of months in the mid, mid 80s. Good, 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 good. Um, and then Scott, you just you just made a roaring comeback. You uh your first time back was the meeting uh, just recently. Yeah, yeah. We we I, when I came back to the meeting, um, our gross was in like seventy one, seventy two, and now we're eighty five. So I'm, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. And when you but when you left, you were you in the nineties. When you yeah. say eighty five, that's half the month too, right? Uh, well, that that's not, that's our projected growth oh, gross for, for home. Okay. Too. Okay. Five thousand. Yeah. yeah. By the way, which which we've never we've never been that high before. We've been in the seventies, floating the seventies before. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So. Well, Willie's question to me was, and I'll I'll throw it out at you guys is, I know all the stuff you guys teach. What's new? Why should I? You know, why should I be involved? Scott, what would what would your answer be? Uh, well, uh, one of the things that I was realizing is 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 uh, I get a lot, you know, everybody does better with a coach, like someone just kind of encouraging you. And so I get a lot of inspiration from talking to all the the, the school owners here and this motivation uh, to do better when people are, are watching, so to speak. You know what I mean? When, when I feel like it's a certain amount of accountability. So I would say if someone thinks that they know everything, I, I've never felt that way after five years of being with you guys. Uh, but if they do, I think, I suppose the next question would be is, has, have you implemented everything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, what, 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 what the irony is on that one, Scott, is, is the biggest excuse that people uh, give for leaving is uh, you don't need to teach me anymore. I haven't Im implemented the stuff that you've taught. And so they leave to go in, in isolation, implement stuff. Uh Talk about that. That yeah, that, well, that was me. So I, I yeah. thought I knew everything too, and and I didn't, but I knew a lot, I guess. But uh, nevertheless, like I just said, um, I, I I realize now that just being around all you guys uh, is very inspirational. So it, it's uh, in the mind, it doesn't do any good until you take action. So I feel more motivated than ever um, as far as taking action goes. So. Uh, that's been the, the biggest thing for me. Of course, I'm learning more too. Don't get me wrong, but it's just uh, I, I'm you know I'm doing things that I know I should have done all along uh, because I'm being inspired and motivated by all you guys. Yeah, and, yeah. Clarify me again. How many enrollments this month you have already? Uh, Thirty-four. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just by just got by 10 days, got ten days to go still. Well, yeah. and, and 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 frankly, just by moving back towards a Parthenon of marketing rather than relying on one or two things. Right. Um, you know, it, it really, it, 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 oftentimes it really comes down to just brain dead silly is just do more stuff, you know, throw more against the wall and all of a sudden there's synergy and it all starts to work. And you'll hit some home run. Let me jump in master Oliver, cause this yeah. would be helpful to some people. Yeah. yeah. What was really helpful to me that just sticks out of my mind from the last meeting was uh, Jason, all the people that got up, and, you know, we did that exercise with the numbers. You know, I'm embarrassed to say I've never done that before, but to see the value of a lead and everybody, no matter how much they were grossing, how much margin there was, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? <laughs> per lead. Oh, yeah. So it was the answer to everybody was more marketing is going to win. I thought, man, 
it's almost like, how can you lose when you look at the ROI? So that, uh, and we did it for like, seems like a day, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> it just really sticks out of my mind. Uh, and it's still there as I, as I come back. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the exciting thing was when you do that is breaking down, you know, I mean, we're moving towards having a lifetime value of saying 7,000 per student. And, you know, most people weren't quite there yet. Right. I think there was, um, I forget what the low was, but maybe it was uh, 5,000 and, you know, and it was kind of up from there. I mean, if anybody has uh, better notes, let me know. Um, but the, as you said, uh, Scott, an awful lot of people were, you know, spending $200 or $300 to get an enrollment and making 5,000, uh, 6,000, uh, moving towards 7,000 per new student. Uh, but when you back it down to what the cost per intro was, the cost per appointment was, the cost per per lead was, is an awful lot of times we were paying, what, $40 for lead and the, the lead was worth, uh, you know, um, um, 700, 800, $900. And, you know, that's the, the margin you're talking about. And the other thing, Master Oliver, I think that is so important for the members to remember, for the members to remember, is that during this meeting, uh, it's there's so many moving parts to, uh, parts to running your school. It's hard to keep your eye on every one of them. But when you come on the meeting and then you hear somebody talking about something and you go, oh, shit, I was supposed to do that, too. And I forgot all about that. Or I was going to do that. Or, you know, it's that constant hearing from other people and and what they're doing. And it's the synergy that is pulled from a team that has a common goal and that's to help each other and improve their, uh, their numbers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The, uh, Paul, I didn't expect to, uh, to see you. Um, uh, have you already, have you already had your, uh, your surgery Monday? Oh, it's coming up Monday. I'm sorry. Monday. So I'm preparing now. So I, I, I had in my head that it was this week. So, uh, yeah, so I'm I'm I've been in and out, but uh, it's uh yeah, it's one of those things that's just got to be done. It's a yeah. it's a facelift, right? Yeah, it's, I'm gonna get all this pulled back. <laughs> you know, I I, I think time you I, see me, I won't be able, my face won't move. Uh, yeah, but Paul, I I I would say all the affluence is uh, is looking good on you. Uh, <laughs> it uh, um, the um. Uh, Paul, one of, one of the examples I was using uh, for Willie earlier is your staffing development. Um, and of course, with two schools, the thing I love to joke, uh, tease you about is being in the Virgin Island with uh, three and or four beautiful women. Um, you always want me to explain that one of them is the wife and the other are daughters. Correct. Uh, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Which usually I, I, I prefer not to explain, just leave, leave them guessing. But, yeah, uh, you know, I I, I kind of like the sound of that in the beginning too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but um, um, that's kind of like the new uh, Sylvester Stallone show. You know, him oh, and the three beautiful daughters. Um, but um, um, tell us about how your staffing is coming. It was coming up on a back surgery. Um, you know that we've had we've had uh, uh, people who that was really a crisis for because they uh, things weren't going to run without them present every day. But uh, you've got things in really good stead. Tell us about that. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm blessed. I have my my two managers here in front of me right now. And, um, you no, know, I think it's uh, – I'm, I'm a lucky guy. I mean, we, we've been training forever. They've been with me forever. Um, you know, so I, I – it's the, it's the last thing – and it probably sounds crazy. It's the last thing I worry about is the schools. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it, they're in great hands. And um, – you know, I'm like I said, I'm blessed. So, but and, and to give everybody, I'm I'm sorry here, just to give everybody a, a, a full picture of it. Uh, I can remember when I first came up to your school that uh, maybe the staff wasn't completely all on board. They had a little resistance to some of the changes that you wanted to make. Right? Yeah, there was a little, there was a little pushback. <laughs> there, there was a little pushback, but. Uh, they're 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 not 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 the case now. <laughs> so you guys that have staff that are giving you a little resistance, uh, you know, that's to let you know that there is hope. They, you know, if you explain it properly, and and of course that's the advantage uh, 
uh, Master Paul, of having two schools is when one school does it, the other school doesn't have an excuse not to, you know? <laughs> That's, yeah, there's a, there's a good synergy between the guys and, and the school. So everybody is kind of like, um, they work together. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a total, total family kind of, um, uh, I guess synergy is probably the best word. Everybody works together. So if one school is down, they they kind of push each other and pump each other up. So it's a good marriage. And, and you know, just uh, for a suggestion, you might be doing it already. One of the things I did when I had the multi schools was that to make sure that everybody was focused not just on their own gross, but everybody else's, is they were getting a bonus for their school, uh, what it did. But if the combined of the school reached a certain number, uh, they all shared in an extra bonus too. And yes. then this, this made them actually hold each other accountable. Hey, you're going to screw up our, our, our numbers here. I want to get that extra bonus for the, the combined school gross. Uh, come on, guys. Uh, what do we need to help you with? Yeah, I, I did a couple of pay scales that way. One of them, I think, went a little bit too far into socialism is it uh, was bonusing, you know, getting about half their pay on the overall gross. And and that had a, a, a negative impact because you're always going to have somebody who's not carrying their weight if he as the organization gets bigger. But uh, um, but you're, you're at a, a nice size where you got them both clicking along pretty well. What what kind of gross did you end up with last month, Paul? Uh, it was like one thirty eight between the two. It was one thirty eight five. Okay, okay. And how's May looking? Or uh, where's you in June? That was May. How's June? That was looking? May, right? Yeah, that yeah, was that yeah. was May. Uh, they're they're on par. They're on par for uh, for meeting their uh, the the goal. The high goal is is one fifty. Low goal is one thirty five. So like right now we're on track for one thirty five. Okay, good, good, good. And hey, welcome, Travis. Uh, also coming from Muggy Houston. I've I've heard you guys are are what 101 degrees with 101 percent humidity uh, this week. Yeah, and like 140 uh, heat index. No, oh, yeah. oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all, all I can say is better you than me on that one. Um, that's when I appreciate the 8,000 foot elevation in Colorado. My uh, my parents are uh, Tulsa. Um, I think 200,000 people in Tulsa are without power for uh, was projected to be the entire week. So my uh, wow. my ninetieth year old parents are uh, are completely without power uh, so far for the week. Wow, uh, not, not not a good situation. It's not quite as hot as it is in uh, Houston there, um, but uh, still not a not a good situation. Was that was that a um, was that a storm? What happened to the power? Uh, it was a windstorm. Apparently, they they get ice and wind and tornadoes. You know, and um, uh, apparently it was a windstorm and it blew uh, it blew branches down on the power lines, knocked out the power lines. Uh, but, you know, 200,000 people out of, you know, uh, that's about 20 percent of the population without power is a lot of people. Yeah, that's a lot. We had a storm come through with no warning about mm, three to four weeks ago. And it was like um, it was like 45, 50 mile per hour winds with 70 mile gusts. And, like it, it was it was stronger than any of the hurricanes we've had. Just yeah. in one little area, and yeah, yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, hey, before we go any further, anybody have any any um, uh, urgent pending questions? Other, uh, I do. Go I, ahead, I, I, go ahead, Sebastian. Go ahead. Oh, oh ladies first. Uh, no matter. I have. Um, oh, Krista, go ahead. I have a question about about paying staff. I I actually I, I just hired a program director, and I'm losing my instructor, so I'm going to have to hire another instructor too. Um, how, how would you recommend, pay, do you just pay the program director a percentage of the profits? Do you, do you do, how do you recommend to do pay, pay scales? Um, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a, um, um, a really good question. Um, uh, my, my approach, and this is, um, the, the, what I'll tell you to begin with is an absentee owner structure, right? And you aren't really an absentee owner because you're still there as branch manager. Um, but I always looked at the pay scale as an absentee owner is I was looking for 25% of the gross to be payroll. And of that 25% of the gross, 12% was branch manager, which arguably is you. 10% was the head instructor or the program director, whatever the other full-time person was. 
and then 3% was left over for part-timers. Um, and that was good up to more or less 300 active students. When we went over 300 active students, I had three full-timers in there. And, and then the, the, the percentages were 10%, 7%, 7% with, again, very little left over for part-timers. Um, but frankly, over 300 active was harder to keep the payroll at the, at the target number, right? The, the part-time payroll tended to inflate a little bit and all those other things. That's why there's, there really is kind of a, a sweet spot oftentimes where 300 active students at 400 average revenue per st student is a, you know, $120,000 a month school with 50, 60% net with the staff all getting highly compensated is a, is pretty much a sweet spot in my perspective. Yeah. And but, the, the advantage of that higher over the 300 and that over a hundred thousand gross is that that percentage is a lot more dollars. So yeah, they can get less percentage divided out among all three of them and still be making more than maybe the two were even at the higher percentage at the lower uh, active count. I, I didn't quite follow that statement, Matt Smith. You're saying you're saying the two could make more than the three. Is that what you're saying? No, I, I, I did. I did. I didn't catch what you're saying. Yeah, I think everybody else caught it, but I'll I'll say it again. Over three hundred, when the gross is over a hundred thousand, a smaller percentage is more dollars than when you're under three hundred and only two people are getting a higher percentage. There actual dollars they're getting is actually less than at the lower percentage when they're making more. Right, right. And of course, of course, there's a break point, right? So the, you know, the tough part is in the transition. Um, but, um, um, but Krista, what you what you want to do is never have a full timer who's not highly incented for results, right? So I am not a fan uh, generally of people who are just on hourly. Um, I'm not a fan generally of part-timers, although the truth is um, many, many times I've filled gaps and filled, you know, the staff with, you know, with, with part-timers, uh, if nothing else as a transition to get where you had good full-timers. But with full-timers, I don't want anybody who is, is um, um, mentally clocking in and clocking out, right? I want them all on the same page. We're working hard to do external marketing, internal marketing for retention, uh, for renewals and so forth. And there's any number of ways to build that. What, what I will tell you is when people build bonus systems that are complicated, they're counterproductive. And so, you know, I've, I've seen schools where you get, you know, X bonus for this much retail and you get X bonus for this many people go to this event and you get this bonus if we do X number of enrollments, you get this bonus if we go over that. The anything that's complicated that they can't kind of comp, you know, compute in their head becomes counterproductive. And that doesn't mean you can't have more than one thing that you're incentivizing them on. Um, I've oftentimes built bonus structures for where the billing check was, right? So when we hit this threshold, there's a bonus. When we hit this threshold, there's a bonus. When we hit through this threshold, there's a bonus. You're getting X percentage of the gross, but if our dropout rate falls, to this percent, there's a, a bonus on top of it, right? So things to incentivize them breaking a new barrier. I would oftentimes have the incentive of, you know, let's get to 300 active students and make that a big deal. And, you know, on incremental steps towards that or 500 students, there's a bonus or, or hit a new gross plateau and there was a bonus. But generally, you know, if I know that we did 5,000 today and I, I'm going to get 500 of it. I'm more incentivized and more excited than if there's a complicated pay structure that I can't figure out in my head as the day is going. One other thing, Master Oliver, I think they should consider is that if you have somebody that's been with you for a long time and they're getting a percentage of the gross, and uh, let's say from when they started to where they are now, the gross has gone up a whole bunch. Well, somebody new coming in isn't going to start at that same uh, commission of that total of the school. 
uh, what I would start them on is a base salary, which would be say the last six months average gross. And then their commission would be whatever they're gonna help the school grow from there would be where their extra commission would come from. In other words, they earned that extra money. They hadn't earned that other money that was already there, but they're gonna get a base salary kind of based on that. You follow me? Yeah, and, and instead a different way, I mean, you could always have them add a starting pay scale. And then when they hit certain training benchmarks, uh, the next levels kicked in saying the same thing that Master Smith is saying. When we did quick start training, they hit a bump in their percentages and their uh, and everything else when they actually tested for and were certified for their black belt, for instance. So they really weren't considered, you know, full time, full bore staff member until they had, had passed that level of certification, as an example. And that first 90 days was always considered a, a, a training period anyway. Does that answer your question, Chris? I mean, we can get, you know, this could be three day conversation, but. Yes, sir. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But to, to the greatest extent possible, make sure you always have people in line with the way that you're thinking about things. And when, when you say a percentage of the profits, some people have tried to do a profit sharing, which, you know, literally they were giving them a percentage of the net rather than a percentage of the gross. And in our case, I've never seen that work out particularly well, mostly because the staff that you're going to hire in practical terms have little or no control over any of the expenses, right? You know, maybe they can turn down the thermostat and keep the electric bill, you know, down by a hundred bucks a month or something. But generally, you know, they don't have much impact on the rent. They don't have much impact on anything else. The only time I've seen that be at all productive is on, again, fully absentee operated locations where, you know, I could say the branch manager, you have 25% of the gross. This is what Bill Clark did for years. You have 25% of the gross to work with, which I would recommend. You have a full-timer, you're getting 10%, a couple of part-timers, but your staffing is up to you. Um, and and let them make those decisions. In practical terms, what I mostly did is I just told them, you know, we have 25% of the gross to work with. So anytime you talk to me about a raise, I'm going to talk to you about how to get the revenue up. Um, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to increase base salaries. We're going to increase the revenue so that your income goes up. Yeah, the only exception to that, Master Oliver, that I would say is if it's a partnership, it's like a literal partnership agreement. And then right. you have a you know, you're 51 and they're 49% owners. And then, right. then, you have, then that's a little more complicated answer, but that's not our question today, but then there is a profit relationship. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and then typically they're maybe getting something off the top and then they're getting a percentage of the, uh, of the bottom line. Yeah. And then you have to wear two, they have to learn to wear two hats. One yeah. is the manager and then one is the owner, and it's really important to keep those distinct. But that's we could we could spend that's yeah. like a whole separate meeting on how to do that. Yeah. If you're ever in that, if you're ever in that situation where you're literally going to do that, then that that's a separate conversation. Yeah. And uh, as a side note, the only problem with with those things is when they have a bad month, they want to be acting like an employee, and when they have a good month, they want to be acting like an owner. Uh, that <laughs> that tends to be human you nature. Said, you said that to me one time, sir. If, if everything goes well, it's because of them. If everything goes bad, it's because of you. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, the best example. That, 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 is, that is unfortunately accurate in many cases. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, Krista, uh, hopefully, hopefully we've answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, Amanda, let me put that same question. Sebastian we had, remember, Sebastian was next. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Sebastian. Good job, Master Smith. Uh I have a very simple question, I believe. Um, I started really strong this month and I have had, yesterday I had about 10 parent-teacher conferences where enrollment and renewals and it did not go great yesterday. Probably I was very disappointed, but I got the same answer for everybody and I know what I'm not doing, um, but I wanted to uh, hear you tell it to me. <laughs> no, it's uh, the, 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 cl the classic, um, uh, I. I'm not having both parents for the enrollment. 
I, I got I get the I gotta talk to my wife, I gotta talk to my husband type of situation. And then they don't, you know, the mom or dad do a very poor sell job. They just hear numbers and they don't get the feeling of the value of what we even did. So when you do an um an orientation class, besides sending them the video, which I should have and I don't, uh, uh what verbiage do you use for that? How do you how do you um express that for enrollment and further training we want them the family to be there i mean what would this make the most sense how, how would you that's my question sorry okay that that, that was kind of a muddled question um, um are, are you talking about at an enrollment or at a renewal uh an enrollment okay and so what you ended up with is several conferences with only one parent there yes sir and they didn't go well. No. <laughs> that sucks. No, sorry, I had a bunch. I did not go. Sorry. I, was re- I had the register ready, man. <laughs> I, okay. Uh, and, and, uh, and the question was? Uh, there's the, and it's just what, a better, better verbiage on, on what to tell the parents and how is it important, you know, to both parents to both of them. Yeah. Yeah, not just for the process of enrollment, but I, I would say, what, what is it that you say? Who's going to be responsible for this? Is that how you verb it when you talk no, to people? No, well, no, no. Uh, well, okay. Well, I mean, the answer to your question is don't do enrollment conferences with with one one parent there, right? And then the um, uh, the rest of the conversation um, is how do you get both parents there, right? And an awful lot of times you end up with, uh, you know, I, I don't know what percentage, but you do end up with, you know, they're divorced and mom and dad live in separate households and sometimes have a, a mediocre working relationship, right? So you have that issue that goes on. The other issue often that you have is, especially perhaps in summer, is, you know, one travels for work, has a different work schedule. The two of them have different schedules and so forth. Um, but I mean, the, the the language during the introductory process is pretty straightforward. We require both parents to be here. Uh, and I really could leave it at that, right? We require both parents to be here, you know, for, you know, to do the evaluation and to review the progress on the program and to do the enrollment. But, you know, it's the we require part not we'd like to have, not it would be useful if, not you really should, but we require, right? And and then the the other question, which I think you're alluding to is, is there anybody else who is going to be in any way responsible for transportation, finances, um, you know, um, or uh, uh, supporting Billy, Susie, whatever in, uh, in the uh, uh, program, right? And then in that case, most of the time, what you're probing for is the grandmother who's paying. Um, or, you know, again, I've had all, all different situations, you know, personally, but, um, you know, oftentimes you need the wife and the, you know, stepfather and the husband and the stepmother or, you know, the wife and her new girlfriend and the husband and the new whatever. Um, but oftentimes there's, you know, some level of complication of all the people you need there. Um uh, but most often what it is, is the complication is the mother brings the kid down and you're trying to get the father there. And then the next level of complication, especially at the lower socioeconomic levels, are I need grandma there because grandma is paying for this or, or something like that. Can I Jason, clarify that a little bit? Jason, yeah, Jason, Jason was going to say something. Uh, yes. Okay. So what, what we, we ask, um, and if it's mom or dad, whoever brings them, right? If it's mom, I'm going to say, so remind me, what's the family dynamic? Is it you? Is it his dad, grandma, grandpa? Who's involved with him weekly, right? And that way you're not assuming that they're married, they're not married, they're gay, whatever. It's you. It's, you know, if it's dad, it's, okay, well, who is it? Is it you? Is it his mom, grandma, grandpa? Who's involved weekly? And then we get that. And then we say, okay, so we require both parents because kids will act different from one parent than with the other. So I need to have both of you there for this. Once we do that, then it doesn't matter if one of you brings them or you drop them off or you're both there or whatever, but we need at least both of you there, right? And then if they have trouble with, well, timing is- Sorry, can you 
Zoom meeting. Uh, Zoom meeting, we, we can do those in the evening or whatever. And that's last year, I only had four out of, I don't know, uh, a lot of conferences. All of them, we got most both parents there. Yeah. Paul or, or Bruce, I think you were saying that you had had quite a few that uh, one parent was on Zoom. Um, or is it Paul? I think that was Paul said he okay. did a lot of stuff by Zoom. Yeah, yeah Paul, we still Paul, do quite how, a bit how, by how, how, how do we keep confusing you? You're 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 the it's the wrong Paul. It's a uh, you do look a little bit like Bruce. So both I, I, handsome I, guys, I guess. I, 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 I guess that must be. I guess that must be it. They get to the same hairstylist. That's it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, uh, but Paul, how how has that been uh, uh, going? What what percentage would you say you got one of the parents in by Zoom, and how effective was that? Fifty to seventy percent is is both parents on Zoom. Wow. Um, wow. We um, we schedule it. There's a lot of times lately, you know, they'll make sure dad gets to a class, but mom has to take the other kids to all the other activities, never get both in the room. Yeah. Um, and we don't want it to carry on, you know, so like, okay, when can dad make it? Oh yeah. He'll come Saturday. Okay. Can you come too? No. All right. Why don't we schedule you on zoom Monday night and sit down with both of you guys, you know, usually after kids go to bed, you know, like we have, 8.30 at night, 9 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night. We tend to do it so they're not as distracted by the little ones. Um, and then we'll do it. If we have both parents here, we definitely grab them and, and, you know, do the enrollment conference. But, yeah, the majority of them we have to do later at night. Yeah. Well, and and and, and that is interesting. That's more than I've heard anybody else doing. But uh, uh, if the closing rates are good and the stick rates are good, that's fa fantastic. And I, I would say – you know, we're always looking for some ray of light that came out of the, the debacle of uh, 2020. But that is one ray of light is pretty much everybody knows how to use QR codes and they know how to use Zoom. And then we learned how to use Zoom at a very high and effective level, especially to uh, in a uh, in a sales um, methodology. Is anybody still using Zoom much for uh, 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 classes? Do you have many people who are who are doing Zoom or are you doing it all? I, 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 I haven't seen much of that. I, it, it, we kind of made the assumption maybe that would carry on beyond zoom and expand the geography and so forth. But I think the, by the time the schools went back in session, everybody was so sick of, you know, um, learning by distance that, uh, it wasn't attractive at that point. Is, is that your take on it? Master Moody? No, oh, we, we still have zoom classes. I think the question is if you offer it, then people will take advantage as a service. So we have people over the summer that are gone for a month and they still attend class with Zoom. So if you offer it, they'll use it. If you don't offer it, they won't use it. It's just how you want to uh, how you want to manage it. In our case, I, I found that our instructors got used to doing it, and so we just never took it away from them. But they can manage the class and they have it fine. If your instructors, you know, we're sort of if when you, your implementation felt painful to the instructors, you know, like you your implementation was you had a separate instructor running somebody on Zoom and you had and it felt like a painful implementation, like you had to have another instructor, then it's pretty hard to justify maintaining that. I wouldn't because we have one or two people on Zoom, maybe in, in a class and a class might have nobody on Zoom. Uh, but in our case, we just have you know, it's always an option. Sometimes nobody shows up. Sometimes we'll have a couple of people show up. So like during the summer, it gets used more. Uh, on a break, it gets used more. And so we had we had one family where there was uh, uh, they were sick. You know, somebody had some sort of infectious. I remember for like a like three four weeks, they had some sort of thing where they couldn't go out with other people. It was an unusual infection, but they kept taking classes because they didn't feel bad. It wasn't COVID. It was something else. So you know, in our case, we kept it because the system wasn't causing brain damage back to the brain damage argument yeah, uh, yeah yeah so so if that's what you can achieve then it's not a big deal keeping it um but if it's a lot of brain damage then i, I would get rid of it too yeah. and, and well and and you don't I, want to get it go ahead Matt Smith. yeah i just want to give uh, if you're finished with that i want to give sebastian the, the second part to his problem uh so uh i think they answered that pretty good for you to how to handle that on the first intro when you're rescheduling, when you're scheduling them for that next, that second class, right? Where they're coming into the regular class. Uh, I will remind you to, you know, make sure that when you do that and you do ask them and, and Jason had some good verbiage as well as a couple others, 
uh, write down who they say, you know, is it the father, is it the uh, grandparent or whatever, write that down on their sheet, okay? So that way you know to expect that person coming the next time, right? And then when your intros get there for the second, remember how important it is uh, for those that were having a problem with their show rate, I was suggesting that, suggesting to them to say, uh, 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 our intro special also includes a free uniform this month. Uh, so if you could get here 10 or 15 minutes early, uh, besides him testing for his white belt, we can also get him in his new uniform. And uh, so now they're gonna get there early. So we've got to meet and greet them and then when we look at our paper, we see who else was supposed to be there. And then I'll say, oh, uh, was dad coming later today? And then they might say, well, no, he's not gonna be able to make that today. And then make that mental note because once the classes start, I want them to see Tommy in his uniform, receiving his belt, uh, the instructor saying, congratulations on your first step to your black belt. Remember, uh, a black belt is just a white belt who never quits. And I point to him, I say, you're not gonna quit, are you? And they go, no, sir. And then then while you they're taking the class, I have my program director go by and reschedule everybody for their next class. And then try to get some, uh, uh, I call it thumping the melon, get some verbiage from those parents to see how they liked it. You know, sometimes they're a little, uh, uh, you know, unemotional. So I've got to ask them, you know, leading questions. Uh, were you surprised that uh, Tommy went and did all those things uh, to help around the house without you asking? Because obviously that was one of the requirements to earn his white belt and he got it, right? And then they'll usually elaborate on that and kind of open up and say, oh yeah, that was you guys uh, surprised me when you said that. I said, well, good luck with that. And then he went and did all those things. I was shocked. Well, that tells us that they have already seen that our program works. Uh, if they say something, oh, he couldn't stop talking about uh, exciting, exciting about earning, get it, you know, can't wait to get his belt and his uniform or whatever. So we want to get the buying temperature. And then I say to the parent, we are going to be going over. Uh, Tommy's uh, progress evaluation on uh, some of the parents today. So when it's your turn, I'll come and get you. Now, remember when I first approached him, the first thing I said was, I want to set up your next class. Now, if that parent wasn't there, that I, I can see on the paper, so-and-so was supposed to be there with the mom. Then I say, uh, when I make that next appointment, I say, When's the next time that uh, dad could come and actually uh, watch the class too? And then you try to schedule that third when dad can come. Now, Jason has had pretty good luck with the uh, Zoom, but I always think if the, if the other parent hasn't actually seen it, you're going to be at a disadvantage because he's trying to make a decision on something he hasn't seen. So it's hard to establish a value on it. But uh, uh, if I put them in order after I talk to every parent, I then put them in order on who I should talk to first because I wanna to talk to the one that I think is the most likely to sign up. I don't wanna start with the hardest. I'm gonna start with the, and then when I go get that first parent to talk to, I say, Mrs. Jones, you got a minute? And they start to come in and then I go to my number two person. I say, Mrs. Jones, you're gonna be next. I'll come and get you when it's your turn. That way, if the class ends, they don't run out the door. They know that they're waiting to talk to you. And then when I finish with one and I go get two, I say that same thing to the third one. So that way I always have my extra one. And if there's one that skips out before, once the class is over and I didn't get them, I already have them scheduled for their next class. So they know to come back and, it's usually the fourth or fifth one that you're talking to that you miss. And that's the one that you think is the least likely to sign up anyway. So I didn't waste my easy sign up walking out the door. I lost maybe potentially that one that was not such a good, you know, excited about it yet. Okay.
Did, did that make sense, Sebastian? Did you, did you catch all that? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. And, yeah. and again, that verbiage that uh, Master Oliver was using and, uh, and some of the other members were talking about how they say it, Jason and the others, I think it's very important on that first intro uh, to find out who is uh, going or, or who is going to be responsible or who will be coming. Because I will tell you, it is a little confusing in today's society with all the different uh, people that could be involved with Tommy's, uh, uh, you know, uh, upbringing. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so Sebastian, <laughs> yeah. how did you how did yeah. you finish? How did you finish May? <laughs> Uh, I finished at about 78 grand. Okay. And now I'm pushing on my team to, I want to be consistent with my 85 grants. Okay. I told everybody, um, I have a couple full-timer. I got more people in my bench that I need, but I am in that mode these days. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I have more people in my staff and I'm trying to train them. And the first thing we started with marketing and picking up the phone and we have been doing all that. And Mr. Smith helped us. Everybody's been training like black belts and um, been setting up appointments for everything. But he came to me yesterday when I had all these appointments that I was the weak link, man. I was the break in the value chain that um, I didn't enroll all these people. And I got more, a lot of those. Uh, I need to talk to my husband. And I was like, I know better than that. So I just kind of, but I wanted to catch him early or, you know, I want to, I want to catch him in the, I want to teach my staff to say something about that before the second class and that the parents know that the second class, um, they have to either come uh, or, or check the buying temperature because honestly, I cannot, it's difficult to sell a, a membership at a high dollar value and commitment if you don't even know their names. So we have uh, trying to just be deeper. And I think those progress checks and evaluations are going to make a difference. I'm going to sit down and say, hey, I want to talk to both of you parents. I'm going to give you the feedback that we as professionals got about your kid and how different options for renewal. But I want to have a conversation with everybody. You know, the I most, know that it's a video. Yeah, the most important word you heard was Master Oliver saying the word required. Yeah. Required. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. the way we do it. Yeah, well, and, and I think everybody thinks usually and we like and whatever is the same and it's not the same. It's not the same as we require both parents to be there. And yeah. I also have that on, on our on our information sheet when they come in, it says all all it's required for all parents, caregivers, and anyone in charge of um, transportation, schedule, custody, or finances attend the first lesson. The only reason this is on there is not so we don't say it, but so the, the staff is forced to have them to say this to them and they initial it. And it's so that it's forced to make the staff bring the conversation up. So again, we're trying to systematize it. So it's on the information sheet. Again, so the staff, it doesn't have to be you guys, the top dogs doing it. It's so I can have 16 year olds do it right. Yeah. Uh, and, Master Moody, if I could, excuse me, got to ask a question. Marty. Go ahead, Marty. Um, so um, since we're talking about uh, parents and stuff, uh, what about little kids? So I've found that many times I'm in the middle of an uh, enrollment conference and all the little kids, the two-year-olds, three-year-olds are running around and acting crazy. Um, and it would be much better if they weren't available. Um, so uh, is there a way to get the parents without the little kids so that they can concentrate better? So I have an answer for that one, uh, Master Moody, if you don't mind, uh, because in our area, uh, for some reason, we tend to have a bunch of those. I would always have one of my uh, uh, instructor trainees, you know, a female junior, you know, that's uh, 16 or 17 uh, or or one of the, the young men that are 16, 15, 16. And I would have them take them into uh, our practice room and uh, keep them entertained, you know, while we were doing the conference. Uh, you know, it's just like having, uh, a, a, you know, you could even do it with one of your moms that you're, that's with one of your uh, advanced students, you know, somebody to, to kind of keep an eye on them, kind of like a babysitter for, for just a short bit. Okay, great idea. Thank you. Master yeah. Moody, yeah, you might have had something else that, that you were going to say. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you don't, I mean, sometimes you might be a one person show and you don't have, or you don't have a room. Uh, that's separate. That's a great idea if you have that. Um, we in our system in the intro that we that we train the staff on. As soon as they're done with the lesson, they 
they have coloring sheets that are karate color. You can find them. I mean, there's a bunch of different versions you can find. And they 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 specifically, it's in our script. They grab this box of crayons. It's like this big, and they give it to them. Or they suggest if the kid, you know, likes to have an iPad or an iPhone, the parent give them the iPhone. I prefer the parent give them the iPhone too nowadays because then the parent doesn't have their phone to look at. And they they so they do a distraction technique. The distraction technique, the old days was you give them this box of crayons and the coloring sheet and they sit them down and they're supposed to color and they have to fill in everything. And then I teach the staff, uh, if they if the kid brings the paper back, I say, well, you have to use every crayon in the box and the box is like this big. And so then, then the kid is distracted during that time. So my rule of thumb is I want to plan my systems that only require one person. I only want to, I want my systems to require one person. And then if another person's available, they can be used. Yeah. So my systems always, if I'm the only person there, I can run everything. So that, that would be the, that would be the, because you're the only one there sometimes, right, Marty? So that if you're there, that's yeah. usually a distraction technique, not in, not like you're fighting, although that's a good, good, actually kind of similar, <laughs> right? You give them the yeah. crayons, you give them the sheet and they do it, or the, you tell the parent, well, you know, what would they like to do? Can you give them your phone? Do they have a game they want to play? They can do that and sit. I, I don't love that just because that's kind of, I don't love that Jonathan hate, you know, I, you know, yeah. kind of, <laughs> But uh, but uh, but it it sometimes that's the best thing too, and then the parent doesn't have their phone in their hand either, to yeah. get distracted Great. or. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, the um um, um going back to what you were saying, Master Me, I, I want to point out just philosophically, and I'm not, that's probably the wrong word. Just just you know from experience, two different ways of looking at the same issue. Master Smith has been so good over so many years at developing a multi-level bench strength within each of the schools that he tends to focus on. I have all these other people that that are our support staff because I have the leadership team. I have the um, um, parents who are very helpful in the school. I have this whole support mechanism. So therefore, I have these people to do everything from run a booth to watch the kids to, you know, teach another introductory class while I'm in uh, in the intro lesson, where Master Moody's perspective tends to be, I don't want to rely on having more people in the school. I want to have the rotating curriculum in place so one person can teach the class. I want to have the systems in place and the enrollment process that I don't need to rely on another human. And both are are exactly what you should learn from that is is you want all the systems to be as simple as humanly possible and as clear and easy as humanly possible and what i tend to find with us teaching staff is we tend to create complicated systems that then they do like a third of what you wanted them to do rather than create simple systems where you can get them to do most of it right um and as far as in your school comes back to the uh, the question um, Mr. Cash had earlier on is I've got to develop that bench strength. I've got to be, you know, from the day somebody enrolls, but certainly through their end of the leadership program, they're developing them. I want to get year two, year three, year four students all thinking in terms of they're there to help contribute. They're there to help teach. They're here, there to help support the school and creating that culture where they don't view themselves as the customer so much as an engaged martial artist there to share martial arts with the community with new people coming in makes all the difference in the world on how they look at things. And, and by the way, the more you create that level of contribution and ownership among your senior students, the more they give you a little bit of slack if things don't exactly go their way, the more they view it as their responsibility to fix things that may be a little, a little bit sloppy on any given day. And the less, I mean, if you ever have first or second degree black belts that are whining regularly about details going on around about the school, it means their thinking isn't right about the way their role is in the school. Does that make sense for everybody? But that really is what you want to be developing is you want to be developing that leadership uh, structure so that they're really, really digging in and contributing at uh, at all times. Um, 
going back to um, Scott, going back to what you were talking about, about the live event, uh, Willie, we were just looking at your stats a minute ago. And as the, uh, the feedback that I had on it, and uh, let's get everybody's take. Uh, when we went through the numbers, Jason, um, and I'll get uh, Scott and Amanda, I'll jump in here, several. But uh, Jason, what were your, uh, uh, what was your lifetime value per student looking at now? Um, we're at, um, I think, 375. Okay, that's, that, that's the average monthly uh, yes. value. Uh, when you look lifetime. at it from a lifetime, if you look lifetime. at it from lifetime, in other words, if you took, say, last year's number, total gross divided by total number of enrollments, what was that number looking at? Um, I don't remember that off the top of my head. I don't have to go back through the notes. I can try to pull up the notes and try to figure that out. But Willie, to, to, as, a, as, a, as a comparison, his average monthly revenue per student is 375. So take the total gross, which is, uh, what was it last month, Jason? Last month was 84. 84. So you take 84,000 divided into the active students. What, how many active students are you at now? Um, we're at 262. Okay. So you take that 262 students divided into 84,000. Uh, that's, I presume, that 375 um, number. Uh, so to give you one benchmark comparison, um, Amanda Olson, your dropout rate has always been the, you know, the, the, the thorn in your side. Uh, what has it been? Where is it at now? Um, five years ago, we were just churning and it was about 15, 16% just in and out. And then now this year, um, this, this month we're at 3%. We've hit some one or 2%. percent. And um, just really uh, excited about being able to fix that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But uh, so, so you're you're trending towards the one to two percent a month dropout rate being the the norm. That's what we, that's what we were trending for. And it, last year we were looking at you know it'd be anywhere between five and eight, and yeah. so this year we're looking between one and four. You know, so definitely everything that we're doing is making steps in the right direction. So. Excellent. Excellent. And Willie, that was the conversation we were having earlier is going from 6.1, 6.2, um, um, relatively simple to get it down to 3% a month dropout rate. And then what's doable is to get somewhere between one and 2% a month dropout rate. I've seen, I don't know, I think I've seen two schools in my life that were in the 0. 0.5, you know, half a percent, you know, 0. 0.7%, something like that uh, per month dropout rate. One of them was Buzz Durkin and the other one was one of his students. Um, but I, uh, in looking at that a lot, I never figured out any way to possibly replicate that. Um, uh, it was mostly just buzz and the, you know, and the, you know, how polite, nice, convivial, you know, it was, it was, it was really about people more so than it was about systems in that case. And Master Oliver, it's also important to, uh, understand when you're, when you're, uh, tracking your ROI on your, uh, advertising spending you know, what is your return on that investment? Uh, that that number of students that that you're getting each month, you know, when you when you're calculating how much that student is worth, it's that initial down payment plus the first month's tuition. So that's for most of our schools, you know, anywhere from six to eight hundred dollars. Uh, not just the first month's tuition, because they always have that down payment or initial investment. Uh, that they're putting on top of their uh, their first month's tuition, uh, we we saw some of our schools that were were dragging their feet on that. They were trying to say, "Oh, you don't have to put a down payment if you do it today," kind of thing. In other words, just first month's tuition. So you, you got to make sure that you are getting that. You know, it's normally eight hundred dollars, and if you find finalize your paperwork today, you get half off is only four hundred. Or some people were doing uh, the thousand and it's five hundred. Some were doing six hundred and it's three hundred today. So whatever you want to charge, you know there is that that little a uh, playroom in there uh, to to make sure you're getting uh, anywhere from five to to seven hundred down. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, uh, Travis, do you have any questions of the of the team here today? Um. No, I mean, I'm mostly just kind of listening and, you know, playing catch up. I guess kind of what we talked about is just the, uh, I don't know if, if anybody experienced a higher notional rate in the, 
summertime. I know this month we've had um, we've had twenty appointments and four shows. Ooh, and uh, I just don't have an answer for that. Where did they come from? <clears throat> um, from a few places, uh, but mostly online. You know, the majority online. But um, and my answer to that when it's online is uh, and and, you know, there's automated systems, uh, et cetera, that we should be using. But nothing beats a phone call within the first uh, minute of of catching an opt in. And number next is uh, the video that you send them that kind of uh, outlays your program and what the intro is going to be like and you walk them through the school and so now they're a lot more comfortable with what's going on and now they see your school they've met your instructors they've seen the facility and now they're a lot more comfortable or maybe committed into coming in uh, and you can send those not just to your appointments but also to your leads that didn't make an appointment and it can sometimes spur that uh uh, you know, that next step to them to get to, to make an appointment. But for the ones who made an appointment, it'll get them to show up too. Yeah, we always send them that video. That's um, good. Can you, always, can, you yeah. can you post that video or send me that video? So sure. we can see, see how it looks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, it, uh, let, 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 let me um, um, expand on that, uh, Travis, is uh, I think it was Scott mentioned, you know, buddy referral events and so forth. Um, and this is, you know, this is off your topic a little bit, but summer is really, really, really good for the kids market, getting their buddies, their friends, their, you know, all of their group to come in and come into the school for all kinds of special, interesting, wacky, different things. Um because they're all looking for something to do and they're not, you know, in most cases in school from eight to three and then into having homework. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and summer is bad for I interact with somebody today and they're going to go to Disney for two weeks. And then I'm trying to get them reengaged after they go to Disney. And if I schedule the appointment two or three weeks out, it's a lot flakier than I get them in immediately. Right. So the the downside of summer is you have people kind of in and out of town a lot and you really want to at first contact get them in immediately because at least if they've been in once even if you didn't get them enrolled once it's easier to get them back in even if they're out of town for a week or two than it is if you haven't got them in uh, at all right um from a standpoint of your show rate i've never seen that that particularly made any difference uh, as far as, you know, if they, if you're, if you're on the phone with them and they schedule an appointment, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, they know whether they're in town, out of town, you know, what else is going on in their schedule. Although, you know, to be fair, parents schedules get a little crazier because it's not the routine of school. It's there's this summer camp, there's this play date, there's this other thing. So it, it's a little harder for them to manage. Um, so I, I never have seen that the show rate declines in having a personal conversation and going through and checking their calendar. What I have seen is sometimes the sales process gets elongated and almost by definition, the longer it goes, the less likely you are to get them enrolled right? Even if it's they contacted you now, made an appointment for three weeks, the likelihood of them showing up in three weeks declines precipitously compared to today. I've seen people do, you know, movie promotions. They get so busy, you know, the first three days that they start scheduling people two and three weeks out. That's always a disaster because um, no matter what you do, schedule them that far out, the show rate is, is weaker. So and, and that's, that's not summer dependent. That's all the time dependent, but the summer they they may tend to schedule further out. I mean, I guess that's the question, Travis. Were a lot of your guys scheduled further out more than they normally are? No, they're usually scheduled within one to two days. Yeah, so I I, I wouldn't see that summer had much to do with it, if any. Um, you know, there may be something deeper buried in there, which is why Master Smith is talking about texting them or an emailing them, a, you know, a walkthrough video of what the introductory process is going to be like, you know, texting them and emailing them, uh, 
um, you know, testimonial videos, uh, getting direct mail into the mail, even if you have a, a tight appointment, you know, if nothing else, uh, you know, welcome. I'm, you know, we're happy to have you in and perhaps something more robust and substantive, you know, the more you can incorporate all of that stuff, even in today's digital communication era, the more times I can get something in the mail to somebody, even if it likely is going to hit after when they're likely to be in, the better off I am. You know, Amanda, you put together that beautiful shock and awe box, you know, and my my only comment was, is why not mail them to people who, you know, who made an appointment rather than waiting until they enroll, you know, just because the more stuff you get in front of them early on, the, you know, more likely you are to build a relationship with. Them. Yeah. Scott, I mean, Scott yeah, were you going to say something? Yeah, I had a quick question. Uh, speaking of uh, buddy events, and if you don't want to comment, no, go ahead. I'm just curious. Uh, I, I get emails for uh, Toby Milroy stuff, and his uh, he has a whole package. It basically looks like a the marketing Parthenon in a box with uh, ads and scripts and stuff ready to go. Um, I think you've done stuff with him in the past. I uh, just it looked pretty good. I was just kind of wondering what your thoughts were. Uh, I've done a lot with Toby. In fact, I was just distracted texting with Toby back and forth a minute ago. Yeah, you know, Toby's background is he he and his partner were in ATA school when they um, uh, became a client with me. And he was doing about 17000 a month. Um, and the story we used to use constantly was Toby's, which was he was doing about 70000 a month. He signed up. He was learning, 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 wasn't implementing anything. And then six months later, he finally implemented the stuff that he's picking up and jumped up to like 65,000 immediately uh, and then kind of went from there. And um, and then when I uh, uh, acquired NAPNA, basically I put him in charge of it. Um, and, uh, you know, that whole venture didn't work out very well for a, for a number of reasons. It's one of, you know, my next book will probably be titled, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time. But huh. uh, um, I, I have not and never have had anything even slightly less than glowing to say about Toby. Um, what you do get, honestly, with all of the materials that were a part of NAPNA with, when I acquired it, most of them, uh, even after I dug into it and Toby dug into it, um, is with all of those organizations, they have to ca cater to the mediocre middle rather than cater to the level that we got. we are all at at this point, right? Because um, you don't find anybody who's rounded up the top 1% or the top 5% of the industry the way we have. So, you know, the, the, the problem tends to be is what might be a blinding flash of the, uh, you know, of, 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 of genius to somebody who's doing 7,000 a month, you know, to you is going to look a lot uh, retread and, and rehashed over stuff that, you know, that we've done a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I have, I have nothing but glowing things to say about Toby uh, their Atlas software, I've talked to Toby about it a number of times. Um, I honestly don't have an opinion about it other than Toby's in charge of it because I really haven't done anything hands-on with it. So, um, um, you know, he went from uh, from working with me uh, with NAPNA to working for YK Kim doing a, a big software project, which was Atlas Software. And uh, um, the company has a, a very high level of focus on transported after school care. So YK Kim's base operation was um, at the time, 50% Korean owned schools, uh, most of whom were doing transport after school care and their stuff was developed uh, around that, uh, uh, that format to give you feedback. So, um, um, that reminds me, um, Master Moody, we should probably have Toby uh, Toby on with us again sometime soon. We've, we've had him. Uh, he and I were just uh, texting back and forth. He wants me to be on a, a podcast he's launching, and I do a column for their magazine. And we're relaunching Martial Arts Professional uh, and was going to do some stuff back and forth with their magazine and with uh, um, uh, Rev Marketing as well as... Um, I got to go to Karate Magazine right there. There you go. There with Amanda Olson on the cover. Yep, Amanda Olson featured yeah. on the cover. If you have guys haven't seen the online version, you, you should be getting an email form for it. If I uh, was um, if if I was going to give it one critique, I wouldn't make all of the articles in reversal. Yeah, that's what I said that too. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, because all the articles are black background, white uh, white uh, text, which make it extremely hard to read. 
but uh, um, anyway, where were we? Um, so I, 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 I haven't seen it, Scott. You know, I'm sure there's some good stuff in there. Um, and- oh, just yeah, just I just from what I saw, you know, I've seen many of the you know when you issue those uh, marketing Parthenon lists, you know, there's like an internal event, an external mm-hmm. event, mailing, yeah. da 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 da, and and um, that seems like what he. I, I don't know. I don't know if you guys collaborated because. That seems like what he has. It's like 300 bucks a month, but it's all done for you here. Are the graphics here? Are the scripts? So I don't know, um, just maybe um, for these guys. Who- I, um, I, 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 I would not suggest, I mean, I'll talk to Toby about what, what they're doing. I, I, I think that's really a retread of, of, um, of the, the NAPNA stuff. And you have access to all the old NAPNA material. Most of it in our context isn't very helpful. Um, but you, you do have access uh, to, uh, I don't know. You you have the 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 best five years worth of fifteen years worth of content easily available, and all the graphics are easily available through the print store. Um, and that's basically what we do with the print store: is we we took the best of uh, of fifteen years worth of material, ash canned about ninety percent that was just horrible, um, updated some of the stuff. What we never um, uh, did and really shouldn't do, um, um, you know, with any level of integrity is create ads that were testimonial based with testimonials because I never wanted to make up testimonials or have, you know, a school student, to, you know, a student who, you know, is training in Texas, you know, uh, show up on a testimonial in, uh, in New Jersey, for instance. Uh, so we never did, you know, what would be to me the most powerful piece of it, which is create real powerful testimonial stuff. Just ethically, I always felt that was saying things that schools needed to create internally. And it's easy enough to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but whether you know, like I said, you've got you've got um, full access to yeah at least five years worth of of that material. Just you know, we've got all of the all of the old NAPNA content online. It's accessible through the member site. The print center's accessible through the member site. We don't talk about it very much because at your level, it's not very helpful. Um, you know, including the ambassador program is, is uh, you know, is on the site. There's two or three other, you know, uh, internal referral event programs that we carried over from the old NAPNA materials that were pretty useful. Toby may have done that program. I don't remember, Bob. I, I know I didn't, um, but um, that, that, wasn't, uh, that wasn't legacy holdover. Uh, and to be fair, most of the legacy holdover stuff really was junk. Um, I was disappointed in the quality of... Uh, of uh, legacy content there. I'm not sure that's a good answer for you, Scott, but yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, mostly mostly all that used to be useful for clip art. And uh, 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 we have, again, ton of that stuff is digitally available to you to do anything you want with. Um, and nowadays, you know, Shutterstock and so forth have lots of clip art. Uh, I think what we are seeing online on your website and so forth is you'd be better off not to be using clip art. You'd be better off to be using students of you in your classroom yeah. and your 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 uh, parents. You know, it, 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 clip art starts looking like clip art pretty quick. It looks generic. Um, and I, 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 a mistake I see made is hiring somebody to do a website or somebody giving you a templated website. I know Rev, when they create a website, they build it from scratch from uh, from the ground up. But I'll speak for uh, uh, Rev, and correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure their biggest challenge is getting good artwork and good video and good uh, personalized content from the school they're building a website from, um, and then having to revert to uh, uh, standard stuff with then, then makes you look like everybody else. Yeah, that's that's very important. It used to be that well-tested photos about three or four years ago, well-tested photos that were we would use. Well, you know, we wouldn't use. Uh, client artwork because uh, it was not, you know, it wasn't as good as like well-tested photos, but Google's indexing all the photos and you want to use unique artwork. So we want good artwork from you. Um, and then it gets all retagged and everything. And that's why, you know, cookie cutter websites don't work and, and uh, <laughs> usually built up from template. I just reviewed somebody's website yesterday and it was all, you know, really, really poorly done. And that's pretty typical. Yeah. And, and and by the way, the mistake I see people make is they have pictures of an empty school. Right. So all of a sudden I have pictures of my school on the website. and There's not no human beings there. 
or they have you as the instructor talking about how excited we're going to have have you in and into the school and they film it in off hours when nobody is there. Um, I think both of those are a big mistake. I'd much rather see if you're going to do a talking walkthrough, have it be when classes are going on, preferably have it be when intro and beginning classes are going on. Um, the solving the audio problem with noise in the background is easy nowadays for 40 bucks. You can get a decent lavalier mic that just plugs into your iPhone or, or um, a connects through Bluetooth. Uh, that is easy to solve. And for most of that stuff, I would, I, you know, I would say it's worth everybody's time just to get somebody who's a halfway decent photographer or just get your, your newest iPhone out and, and do it, but do a walk through the school, do some, uh, a bunch of, of off the cuff, um, uh, on the fly parent testimonials and get pictures, but make sure the pictures are organized looking, smiling kids in class. Um, you know, don't do uh, Buzz Durkin, you know, who I mentioned before as being the best in the I've ever seen on referrals is also the worst I've ever seen on marketing. Uh, he still has his website that he's got this beautiful school he built out and it's a 300 60 degree walkthrough of an empty school. So you, you see nicely polished wood floors and one thing or another, but there's no classes going on. There's no students in place. There's no smiling uh, faces that, you know, just, you know, be, be aware of what that perception is. And Scott, as far as the, uh, you know, the events done, that type stuff, we know what works, right? Is really what the excuse for the event is doesn't make much difference. Um, but we know what works is you want to get permission slips. You want to make an appointment on the way in the door. Um, so you want to make sure you have name, contact information, that parents are required to be there. And when they come into the event, you make an appointment on the way in the door rather than waiting until afterwards. The death knell is only getting like name and email or name and phone number and then trying to call them after the fact. Um, the, um, um, the important thing is full contact information. Make the appointment before the event starts get an appointment with 100% of the people for follow-up. And then it's all about promotions. And the actual physical stuff, the flyers you put up, the signs, all that stuff is probably 5% of the results of any event. The uh, results of the event is putting your hand on the shoulder of every parent ma while making eye contact and confirming they're going to be there, explaining what it is and, and so forth. It's all the one-on-one -on -one conversations combined with creating a lot of excitement and energy in classes about it. Does that make sense? So uh, I do think that schools get really fixated on all the stuff that matter least and kind of miss the absolute most important pieces that, uh, uh, that make those things uh, work well. Well, good. Before we run out of time, um, hey, Bob, remind us all of what our date is in October for our next live meeting. It is October 12th through the 15th, I think. There you go. There you, you go. Got it. 12th through the 15th, um, <laughs> same schedule as, as our most recent one. We'll do a quick start, which is not you guys, on Thursday, and we'll do a, a leadership mastery on Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday, we'll do our million dollar. Uh, crew. Um, the uh, the last meeting um, had a uh, a relatively low turnout because of uh, affluence. Is it turned out we had had uh, uh, people in Europe, we had people in the Virgin Islands, we had people in uh, um, all points of the world, other than uh, other than in Colorado, as well as uh, some organization events that happened to be um, scheduled at the same time, some tournaments and. Uh, high level black belt testings and so forth. But do plan on that now. Put that on your calendar. Uh, this one will be in Colorado, and then I'll be uh, diligently working on some uh, some interesting experiences for next year as well as the schedule for next year. Uh, any last uh, question or thought before we call it a day? Really? really? Quick, I posted ahead, something. Jason. Yep. Sorry, I posted something about a pop card. I'm not sure if you saw that. Um, I posted to the group. So it's a card um, and, and, you know, kind of like a business card. And then you go up to one of your customers your, you know, and say, hey, we, we, you know, we'd love to have a five star review. Would you be willing to give us one? And then you just tap their card and it brings them the page. And they just it's really simple, really easy. We just ordered one. So uh, people might want to check that out for extra testimonials. So it's, a, it's an NFC. It's an NFC transmission of the Web page. I believe so. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. And you can do that with QR code as well. Um, and and um, uh, Jason, the other application for that, there's companies that make everything from wristbands to little table displays, all kinds of different iterations of that, business, business cards. Um, the other application of that is you're out at a live event yes. and to share your contact record. So not not the Google review, but you use it to share the contact record and yep. then they put it in their, their phone, um, yep. which can also be done uh, with QR code. And, and again, one of the one of the nice things about the pandemic, if you want to come up with a nice thing, is people learned how to use QR codes. Yep. And all the devices started using them. Yeah, the, that's right. That's right. Uh, a nice confluence of events. But the the NFC devices are great, too. So, so again, you can use it for any purpose. But in this case, you're using it to get five-star Google reviews. So they touch their phone and they give you a review. And the other application, which I like a lot, is you tap them and they you put their contact record in their phone. Willie, did you have any questions of, of the gang before we uh, ring off today? Uh, no, no, not today. Thank you for everybody for sharing. Yeah. And did, did we end up with a follow-up time? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Today. 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 Oh, okay. okay. Later today. And we'll be on this Zoom link, Willie. Okay. So you're, you're, you're going to do death by Zoom. You know that I've, I'm booked from two to three my time, right? Okay. Just, 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 just making sense, making sure. Okay. Okay. okay well, that works. On, on that note, we'll call it a day. Travis, we were going to chat for a second and then uh, call it a day. All right, guys. Good work. Did we lose Travis?